Hi everybody. Welcome to this presentation called Flat Earth Curvature Confusion. Before we get into the topic, I just want to talk about my channel very quickly. Just uh, if you like these videos that you're seeing here, make sure you subscribe and check that little bell so that you get notifications when I post new videos. <clears throat> For doing it on your smartphone it's basically the same thing just hit the subscribe button but you really should uh, click the bell and that way you'll be notified uh, you know for uh, new videos that I post so right now at the uh, today making this video I'm up to 360 subscribers and just want to say thank you for that and if you do like what you're seeing go ahead and share it with others um, and I'll keep making these videos. So into the topic. I'm sure you've seen uh, memes like these on Facebook and other places um, asking you know where's the curve, uh, giving various values for how much curvature there should be and it's not there, it's missing, obscured or what have you. You'll see uh, these types of memes t talking about different places in the world again where there should be some curvature, but uh, it's not there, therefore the world's flat. This one's actually talking about surveyors and engineers that don't factor in uh, curvature. And this one's pretty popular, you'll see this a lot, talking about this long bridge going across this lake in uh, Louisiana. So I'm gonna I'm going to actually uh, settle this for you so that you can see what's actually happening. Um, maybe this is the reason for the confusion. You know, we don't need no math <laughs> or theories. It's just flat. Believe it. Um, all right. Just had to get that in there. Uh, here, here's where the confusion lies. There are two sources for computing uh, distances on the Earth that uh, people are using. The one on the left is called this Earth Curve Calculator, which really calculates the uh, the distance down from the horizon, uh, given different heights. If you're at, you know, what your eye height is and uh, what the target height is, and that thing works very well for doing that. The uh, one on the right is strictly uh, used to calculate the drop from the horizontal tangent using the 8 inches per miles squared. So it dawned on me this week and I made this post on uh, Facebook under under someone else's post. I'm not, I chose not to reveal who that was but they posted a link to an earth curve calculator and I'll let you read this for yourself but uh, basically I finally figured out what's going on here. People are calculating different things and using them for the wrong thing. And that's what I'm going to dissect right now. Let's look at that. <clears throat> so back to these two uh, sources. What you're looking at here, and there's, there's my little theodolite, you're looking at um, a very accurate chart uh, giving you the drop of the curve from the horizontal tangent, okay? There's your eight inches times the miles squared. That drop has to be uh, measured from that horizontal tangent. The problem is nobody ever establishes the horizontal tangent. <laughs> they just post pictures and you're just looking out over the horizon, you're looking out in the scene and you have no idea where the horizontal tangent line is. All right, so I'll make that point first. Well, this one over here is not doing that, and so I've superimposed my instrument here, plumb, and creating that level line, which uh, becomes the horizontal tangent plane going out, you know, forever, really. Uh, as you can see here, this value is going to be completely different than what this curve calculator is doing, which is calculating H1, which is the distance from the horizon. That's a different line, okay? So I just wanted to really draw your attention to this. 
We're really talking about two different things. And so if there's any uh, distant visible object out there, you can certainly see it. Okay, and so the problem comes in where people are using the chart on the right to calculate the drop of the curve from the horizontal tangent plane, and then they complain that they can still see the thing, and then they conclude that this is missing curvature, and that's just incorrect. Now, of course, if you're going to calculate H1, <clears throat> that's going to be uh, you know, from the horizon. And that's where I made that little red line up there on the Earth's surface on, on the chart on the right. And that's a whole different line, completely different than the horizontal tangent plane. All right. In order to look, in order to look out at the horizon, that horizon is going to be below the horizontal tangent plane. So I'll leave this up for a second and hopefully, you, you know, the, 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 hopefully this uh, dissecting it this way shows you the difference of what's you know what's going on the difference that people are coming up with and applying it incorrectly I'm going to point out also just I'm not nitpicking here I'm just pointing out that this table is uh, is definitely out to too many significant digits way beyond anybody's ability to measure to that level of precision and uh, I'll say the same thing over on this chart. You should really round it off to an actual attainable precision. And so I'm going to summarize now. We're going to use this chart, which does a great job at calculating <clears throat> the distance below the horizon. And this chart calculates the drop of the curve from the horizontal tangent plane. And so if you are using that chart, and you're neglecting to establish the horizontal tangent plane to, to measure the drop from, you're missing the point of that chart. You're missing the whole point. Okay? So, I'll just uh, wrap it up saying, don't mix these up and confuse the results. And I really think this would be a great topic for another uh, video from Dr. Zach. He does some great uh, AutoCAD work does some good stuff. I'd like to see him maybe break this down a little bit better than I'm doing uh, just in a PowerPoint presentation. But So there it is. We'll look forward to that. Um, and by the way, Dr. Zach, thanks for sending me your AutoCAD drawing of, uh, of the spherical Earth. I appreciate that. Um, <clears throat> moving on. So, uh, since I kind of was talking about the uh, significant digits on those charts, the question becomes, well, what precision are we really working with? You know, what are we talking about here? And I, I wanted to share this with you. You can look this up. This is a nice book on basic surveying math and, and surveying concepts. I give the reference there down below. But this is a nice uh, comparison of the standard error of angular measurement uh, in terms of the linear aspect. In other words, how far you will be looking out there, what angular resolution is possible. And this comes down to also talking about the type of equipment that you're using. Are you working with a one-minute mountain transit or a compass? You're just working with a compass? Or are you working with a high-precision, one-second theodolite? You know, you're going to be able to measure to greater levels of precision with the higher refined instrument. Keep that in mind. But, um, and I'm not going to delve into all that very deeply here. We could do a whole video just on that. And actually, you can find lots of videos on this topic of, of uh, positional tolerance and uh, measurement uncertainty and, and all the statistics associated with that. <clears throat> what I want to talk about is, you know, in, in, in with what we're doing here of, of looking for Earth's curvature, when you're looking at 10s and 20s and 30s or 50 plus miles, are we able to realistically see one inch or a foot or tens of feet? Or is it hundreds of feet? What, what do you actually, what do you have in mind when you're looking at this information? What do you think you can actually determine? So keep that in the back of your mind. It's something to think about. For instance, if you look at these, um, 
pictures that I've posted, uh, you're looking at buildings that are, you know, 27 miles away on the left, that's the Empire State Building, and uh, on the right, you're looking at uh, uh, the skyline of Philadelphia, and that's uh, it's about 32 miles away. Um, you know, do you think you can do this to the nearest inch, nearest foot? Are we looking for tens of feet, or is, are we talking about hundreds of feet? What happens here in terms of the resolution and your ability to measure that? What's the reality? If you want the details, you can look up these two videos on my channel. Uh, the, the, there are two that I've done from either side of New York. Uh, from the Fire Island Lighthouse, the one on the right, that is to the east, about 47 miles away. Around there, I've, I'm yeah, it's 40-some miles. I think it was about 47 miles. And uh, on the left is from Washington Rock, and that's to the west of the city. So I'm on either side of the city. And if you really think about what you're seeing there, um, yeah, I'm, I don't want to draw the conclusion. I'd like you to look at this and evaluate this information yourselves. The one on the right, um, you can find some of these details in this video called Flat Earth Proof. Show us the measurements. Um, also, you'll see I talk about uh, uh, Red Pill World's photography that he took through his theodolite, through his telescope, of uh, the Sears Tower in Chicago across Lake Michigan. That's also included in that, in that video there. All right, now um, sometimes it comes up, people want to introduce the idea about refraction. What about refraction? So I'm just including this chart to break it down so you could see uh, what, what's involved here, and uh, s there seems to be a question, is, the, is it up or down? Uh, some people think that light bends up, some, and you know, we accept the no, or the accept, let's put it this way, the accepted uh, a story, or you know, uh, what we accept to be true is that uh, the light is bending down. So, 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 but some people say it's going up. My question is always, uh, whether it's up or down, what magnitude? How much does it bend? You know, and and uh, what is the rate over distance? That's this. That's a very simple question that, that should be able to be answered. You know, are we talking about in a hundred feet that it's bending a foot? I mean, just think about it. Is it a foot? Is it an inch? Is it is it minuscule in a hundred feet? What is it in a mile? Okay, so. That's, a, that's something you need to know so that you can evaluate what you're seeing. Now, I included this chart. I got it from an old book. Um, and I'm just showing you where it came from so you could look it up. But uh, this is a huge table. It goes on and on. And I just captured the, uh, the, the top of it. So you're seeing uh, <clears throat> curvature. You're seeing distance in miles, the amount of curvature in that distance, the effect of refraction, and then curvature and refraction combined. So, as it turns out, uh, in feet, if you combine the effect of curvature and refraction, it's 0.57 feet uh, times the distance in miles squared. Um, and you're going to notice something, you know, in this first mile, you notice they rounded their chart off to 0.7. Actually, it's 0.67 is 8 inches. And... Uh, you notice right away, in one mile, the effect of refraction is about a tenth of a foot, okay? So, so just to get a feel for what we're looking at over some distances, let's look at 10 miles. In 10 miles, the effect of refraction is around 9 feet. I'm just rounding off, okay? So, the curvature and refraction combined would be 57 feet. So, it's just, you know, just like ballparking it, just to have a rule of thumb, you could say in 10 feet, we're looking at about 60 feet if you want to round it off. Because, you know, you're not going to be able to see, uh, t you know, 2.6 feet in 10 miles. You're not going to see that. So you could just round it off. You, you get where I'm coming, at, coming from with this? Just round it off. Uh, you, you cannot measure these things to the nearest uh, couple of inches. Look what happens over here in 47 miles just the, refra the refraction effect is about 206 feet. Uh, but the drop is going to be, 
you know, 1,270 feet, just rounding off. I could say for, for just guesstimation purposes, in 47 miles, you're looking at about, uh, you know, 1,300 feet if you just want to round off to the nearest, uh, uh, you know, hundreds of foot uh, place. But again, yeah, you, can, you could measure these extremely precisely, but you're not going to do it by just walking out and looking or taking pictures with a, a P900. All right. So just try to get a sense of the, the magnitude that we're dealing with so that you have a feel for this. Uh, gut feeling is a good thing. I noticed, you know, a lot of these Facebook groups are always talking about trust what you see. Well, here's how you can get a better feel for what you're seeing. Okay. Uh, for for a um, more detailed um, look at measuring curvature, and, and uh, uh, vertical deflection, I point you to the last video I did back in February, Flat Earth, Missing Curvature Found. Uh, take a look at that. So let's use this example going across Lake Pontchartrain. I said it. <laughs> There's a, just a snapshot from uh, Google Earth. Um, as you notice in the videos that I post, I always go and get the old geodetic triangulation diagrams for the states that I'm investigating or looking at or doing measurements in, or even if I don't go to that state. I did a video including Oregon. Um, I've been to Oregon a few times, but anyway, you get my point. I go back and go look at the old source information. Of course, this stuff goes back years, years, and years. It's not, this was not done using GPS uh, as of the last 10 or 10, 20 years. This stuff goes back to the 50s, 60s, and 70s, and, and in some cases earlier. So there's the triangulation diagram for the uh, state of Louisiana. And what's triangulation? Well, it's something uh, probably none of you listening to this have witnessed personally. I haven't witnessed it personally. Uh, I have never climbed up a Bilby steel tower. That's what you're seeing here. A survey party on the right with their theatolites set up probably over 100 feet in the air. And um, what are they doing? Well, they're generally pointing that theatolite at a guy aiming a light at them. And this stuff was done at nighttime. Uh, so the target is that fella sitting up there aiming this uh, bank of lights toward uh, the theatolite. And these guys on the right would be aiming that theatolite through a round of points. And you could see here on the left, here's just a triangulation diagram I grabbed off of uh, Google Earth or Google uh, Images. And you could see each one of these intersection points was occupied. Well, not necessarily. This one was not occupied. It's intersected. So the dashed lines means that they only observed it from these points. But here, they, observe, they set here. Here they intersected a point, intersected a point. Here they measured to, measured. So all the solid lines are where they were observed from both ends, like from Buffalo to, I can't read that. But anyway, you get the idea. So all of these angles get measured. And the lengths get computed using trigonometry because you might have a base here where they actually measured that length. And then they would measure a length over here to close. But all the rest are measured strictly by high precision angles. And here's a very tall Bilby steel tower sitting over top of a mark like this. So that's a geodetic control marker. It's a triangulation station. Okay. So that's triangulation. Here's a close-up of the lake. And here we see the triangulation that was observed across the lake for when this bridge was built. And uh, here's another close-up view of another diagram just giving you additional detail. Here's, a, here's a, uh, a line that's been measured. The length has been measured here. Um, OK, well. This was pretty cool. I came across this old plan used 
as you read here, this is an example of horizontal geodetic control for bridge engineering and planning. And it just happens to be the exact bridge we're talking about. Okay, moving on. What I did is I, I took that PDF file and I georeferenced it. In other words, I assigned coordinates to the pixels uh, on the corners and brought it into my software. Um, and, uh, you know, I have a video on that too if you want to ever see how that's done. There's a video on georeferencing um, PDF files or TIFF images, any, any type of imagery, you can uh, assign the coordinate values to the plan and, uh, and then bring it into AutoCAD if you want to. Um, so here's a snapshot of that. And then what I did is I went and got each of these geodetic control stations. And lo and behold, when I imported them, they landed exactly where they uh, should be. So I was pleased with that. So that, that, that's what I did. Um, here is a um, an NGS data sheet for one of these marks called Indian. I'm just show you, showing you what that looks like. Um, and I think what I'll do here is just show you in Google Earth how you can easily go get those. I basically just did two radial searches um, on either side of the lake and I did find these marks here, I'll just click on one of these. And um, I think, yeah, I've done a video on this too, just uh, doing geodetic control research. Uh, I did that for, um, oh, what's his name? That Mountain of Evidence video. Like, yeah, anyway, here's a, a, a station called Crossover 7. You have its latitude and longitude and so forth. It's a classical geodetic uh, station, just done by um, uh, triangulation, basically. All right, so just moving on. Uh, what I chose to do was, uh, I just took two of the stations. I didn't do this for all of them. I did it for Indian and Lewis. So from Indian to Lewis, I did a geodetic inverse. Um, and then I, you know, to get the distance and the azimuth and change in elevation. And the, here are the results of that tabulated. Um, and then what I did was took that information and put it on my standard chart that I've been using lately, just to show you the horizontal tangent plane and the drop of the curve. So you can see from the standpoint at Indian to Lewis, uh, you have a delta elevation. They're, they're very, they're very near the water, uh, and um, and there's the amount of curvature, which is shown as this theta angle on this chart. That's what that is. That's the difference between one latitude and longitude to the other latitude and longitude on that line. And that's just how it works out. So it's 20 minutes, and people constantly are asking this question. Well, why can't you see that building uh, tilted and so forth? Okay, you know, this is very extreme. I mean, really, what this really looks like is pretty flat in reality. But so that you understand that we're talking about this curvature, you know, I'm just drawing it in an exaggerated fashion. You're not going to see buildings tilting uh, 20 minutes. You know, it's, it's, it's what, a third of a degree. Um, in, in 60 miles, you have a, you know, you start to get to a nearly a degree, around a, a whole degree of curvature. You can't see that. You, I doubt you could see a degree of curvature in your living room, you know. You know, when you see a picture on the wall that's out of plumb, it's tilted, <laughs> that's a lot of degrees. It's not one degree, okay. So get real with that stuff. Get a sense of what you're supposed to be able to see, what's possible to be able to be seen. All right, and there's the uh, miles and the drop of the curve. Well, how'd we do? All right, he's saying here he's got 23.87, 23.87, just round that off, 23.9, okay? You could say 24 miles. In 24 miles, 380 feet of missing curvature. All right, well, I don't think so. 
I don't think it's missing. <laughs> so yeah, it's 380 feet of curvature, right on. Uh, that is a fact, okay? So the question becomes, well, how can you do this? How do you do it? Well, I've done it this way for a long, long time. And I'm going to show you that next. And this is where I will splice in the, this video that I love. In fact, well, why splice it in? Let's see if I can get it to play. How is the horizontal tangent established? That should bring up YouTube and play this clip. Lights basically consist of a series of mutually perpendicular axes. The vertical axis, which passes through the center of the horizontal circle. The trunnion axis, which passes through the center of the vertical circle. And the line of collimation, or line of sight, which passes along the center of the telescope through the center of the crosshairs on the diaphragm. Before it can be used to measure angles, the theodolite must be carefully centered and leveled so that its vertical axis passes vertically through the station, its horizontal circle lies in a horizontal plane, and its vertical circle lies in a vertical plane. Yay. I hope that came through. Now, uh, by the way, that's only a clip that I took of a larger video, and I, if you look in the description box, if you go to this video, Watch the whole thing, it's excellent. Uh, you should check it out. All right, moving on. All right, so the next time you see it memes like these, just say, planar coordinates much? <laughs> so here we're looking at the uh, topographic map of uh, the Suez area in Egypt. Here's a close up of the canal entrance. Uh, so, you can take a look at this. This is down in the lower left-hand corner. And what do we see here? This is the projection. So this is how we take uh, latitudes and longitudes and flatten them out and project them as grid values of northings and eastings, in this case meters, to create a map that you can now use planar geometry, plane trigonometry, which makes things pretty easy to do. And so that you're not dealing with spherical trigonometry, which is unnecessary over uh, short distances. And when I say short, I'm talking 25 miles. You know, to build that bridge there in Louisiana, they took all those latitudes and longitudes and they can uh, turn them into state plane coordinates. And that's what the contractor used when they got the uh, bridge plans and, and built that bridge. Um, so that's how it's done. You can uh, look at another video I did called uh, Mark Sargent Interviews Another Plane Surveyor Again. And uh, I describe state plane coordinates uh, at pretty good length, pretty good detail for you know the audience I'm uh, talking to, so I don't lose anybody. All right, uh, moving on. So what I, you know, do I got to keep making these videos? Uh, I've got all the research done for the Bedford level. Uh, I've got the topographic plan maps, I've got the digital terrain model, and, um, uh, and actually the control points <laughs> over there. And, uh, you know, I've been thinking, well, maybe I'll just make a video about that too. But, um, you know, I hope this video really kind of straightens it, straighten this out for you, uh, this whole confusion about the different numbers you're getting from the different charts and what the expectation is and what to do with that number. Okay, don't take the drop of the curve, eight inches times the mile squared number, and confuse it with the drop from the horizon. That's a different thing. And, you know, that is the that is the whole point of this video right here, that I hope I've uh, helped you see that. So, you got it? Curvature found. It was there the whole time. Somebody tricked you. <laughs> but now you know better. So get busy making new memes. I think that's the end of the presentation. Uh, see you next time. Thanks for uh, listening. <laughs>